college is always a big topic that keeps on recurring over and over and over again. College students, especially the ones that are about to graduate, are always looking for guidance. Uh, and I often get the question, Dave, what do I do after, after college? Do I listen to my parents and go get a nine to five even though I don't want to? Or do I pursue my own dreams, uh, go into business or you know, start art, start writing, start painting, and just forget about what my parents or the prevailing uh, current of society is telling me to do? And the answer to that question isn't really so different uh, if adult were asking the question of what should I do with my life right now? It's pretty much the same answer. And it's not about what I should be doing, what action should I take. I think it's more about how do I live my life? Think about diets. When people go on diets, do you know that over 85% of those people who go on diets actually gain more weight? <laughs> they gain more weight. Why does that happen? It simply happens because people took this concept of a diet, kind of took this pill, metaphorically speaking, and literally speaking in some cases, and tried to temporarily change their life, expecting a long-term result. No, makes no sense. So if you just start eating a certain way, just for a certain period of time, it's perfectly logical that if you stop eating that way, then you're gonna gain more weight. That's not holistically, uh, that's not a holistic way of thinking. Same thing goes with your life. You can't just do one little thing, do it temporarily, and then expect that to unfurl into the future, a positive future in your life. So you kind of have to think holistically when you want the answer to this question and understand that there is no answer to this question. What you should be doing with your life, how you should be living, nobody can tell you that. So me even making this video really is just a play. It's a play on words, it's a play on ideas, it's a play on thoughts. That's great. but. That question really needs to be directed inward. And you have to say, listen, am I gonna do the best possible things, live the best possible way, think the best possible thoughts, and even if I fall, get back up, or even if uh, my thoughts aren't that positive, fine, I recognize that and, and get back on course. If you live your life in a way that is in alignment with your nature, is in alignment with your nature as Thoreau talks about brilliantly you should read Walden his masterpiece and then of course read Emerson but if you live in accordance with who you are as a person then everything else will fall into line so even if you do have to go get a job placate your parents make some money become a member of the society a, a outstanding member in order for that to help you achieve where you want to be, then you have to do that. Go ahead and do that. You know, oftentimes when we study metaphysics, we study Buddhism, we study these sort of ancient philosophies and ways of living, we learn that the future is bad. We, you know, that's not what it's taught, but that's how it's interpreted. The future is bad, the future doesn't exist, forget about it, forget about the future, only now, only now, only now, no. That's not entirely, you know, all encompassing. Yes, if we focus too much on the future and escape from the present moment, then we're gonna build anxiety, we're gonna have issues, and we're not really gonna get things done in life. We're gonna be do, doing more worrying than taking action. But as someone who's a leader, as someone such as yourself that needs to lead yourself, that needs to take control of your life, that needs to pursue your dreams and to find out your course in life, you have to take on that burden to think into the future. Hasn't every artist thought into the future? I mean, when uh, Basquiat, you know, one of the neo-expressionist uh, painters living in the city back in the 80s, he had to think 10, 20 years ahead of his time in order for him to be who he was. And many people didn't understand his art back in the late uh, 80s, but in the 90s, you know, this is after he died, people started to understand. In the 2000s, people started to understand more and more. And then you have people like Jay-Z, you know, buying his paintings for hundreds of thousands of dollars. He's up there now with Jackson Pollock as some of the, one of the best uh, 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 expressionistic uh, painters of his era. So, 
what I'm trying to get at here is don't think so much in the minute little details of whether or not you should go get a job or whether or not you go to placate your parents or whether or not you know these little these steps that you're taking may not be in the best interest what I'm saying is take a broader look at the, at the board and realize that it's not checkers it's chess and sometimes you have to take two steps back to go three steps forward sometimes you have to sacrifice some of your time or sacrifice a piece or sacrifice an entire situation in order to capture the king 20 moves later 50 moves later what have you so take a breath clear your mind every day meditate pray whatever you want to call it eat well drink positive herbs that help your body uh, adaptogenic tonic herbs yerba mate is a great one do what you have to do think long term also think into the future but don't let the future pollute the present moment also stay present do these things and your life will evolve into a way where you're not thinking about the minutia the nitty-gritty all the time and you know beating yourself up with these little things or this job that you have to get or this situation where you have to compromise sometimes you have to compromise and then your life becomes this ship with a very powerful sail and behind that sail is your direction your passion your goals that you have now realized what they are and that becomes the wind behind the sail and you go where you need to go and that's it that's your life